Hi there, and let's get right to it. Today we're looking at one of the final tools of the central palettes of the color page, the data burn-in controls. This palette is incredibly easy to use, and it allows you to burn in the metadata of your individual clips or your project into the image on the viewer or even onto the video upon export. This is very useful when you are sending out preliminary edits to clients and you want them to be able to refer to specific clips and time codes. So I've had plenty of situations in the past where I would send a client a video and they'd be reviewing it on a very basic video player like Windows Media Player or QuickTime and their only reference is the minute and second time code they see. So they might get back to me and say, we're really happy with everything except for this thing that happens at 2 minutes 30 seconds, can you work on the shot, etc. And then I'll pull up the timeline, and at 2 minutes 30 seconds, I realize they could be referring to one of three potential shots. So it really benefits us both to be able to refer to the same SIMT time code, and that works best when it's burnt into the image. All the different types of things you can burn into your image are listed on the left-hand side. So you've got your source and record time codes, you've got things like source file names and audio information, as well as three lines of custom text that you can use to include personal notes. In the second column, you can see we also have access to logos, which means that you can import an image file and either use it as a watermark or just for general legal or commercial purposes. Lastly, you can also use the metadata that's associated with your clips, things like shot scene take numbers, dates, cameras, and rolls. Every time I tick one of these options, it appears on my viewer and it sort of starts compiling itself you might want to be selective about what you want to include because eventually you're going to end up covering your entire image and that might be a bit counterproductive. On the right hand side you have the individual controls for your font type, size, color, alignment, etc. I won't go into too much detail because these are pretty straightforward text controls. You also have the ability to create presets. So if you're always including the same bit of information with all of your exports then you may as well just click on create and give it a preset name. And from then on, this will be accessible via the drop-down menu in the top right corner. Some final options you have at the top of your palette is the ability to switch between project mode and clip mode. In project mode, you'll have the same data burn-in from one clip to the next, which will of course change in accordance with any source information that you might be requesting. But in clip mode, you can choose to only display metadata on certain clips but not others. So this is where stuff like custom text becomes really useful because then you can go in and make custom comments. If you've added something to the data burn-in and it overwrites your previous information, you can just change its position by going after the vertical controls in the center here. To the right of that, we have some additional options about ganging the render text styles. So this basically says, will all of these metadata elements have the exact same text type and size, or do you want them to be individuals by unganging them? And you can also choose to remove the prefix inside of your render text so that you're only outputting the information. But this isn't really recommended because in my case, I can't really tell the difference between my source timecode and record timecode anymore. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.